Good evening. I am Professor Shamli Sahai from EC Department, SIRT Bhopal. Today, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the Smith chart. Smith chart was developed in 1939 by P.W. Smith. It is a graphical tool to analyze and design transmission line circuits. Today, it is used to categorize the performance of the microwave circuits. So it is a graphical represented, uh, representation which is used in many applications for the, uh, for, uh, to calculate the performance of the microwave circuits as well as it is used for designing the transmission line. Now discuss about the Smith chart. It is mainly used to find out uh, the values of the impedances, voltages, currents, etc. All repeat every half wavelength. So we can find out the values of impedances, voltage, currents, reflection coefficients, standing wave ratio at various wavelength. So these wavelengths are the functions in terms of lambda by two. Now the magnitude of the reflection coefficients, the standing wave ratio, which is known as SWR, do not change. So they categorize the voltage and current patterns on the line. So we know that standing wave ratios, these, uh, this ratio, it is a uh, ratio of the incident voltage and the reflection voltage. When the mismatch of the load occurs in transmission line, so a part of the incident wave, reflect, uh, a wave reflected back or it's come back from the load. So the superimposition of the incident wave and the reflection, uh, reflected wave causes the standing wave uh, motions. So these uh, points which does not move. So it is a resultant of the incident waves and the reflected waves. If the load impedance is normalized, by the characteristic impedance of the line, then the voltages, currents, impedances, uh, densities, etc., all still have the same properties. But the results can be generalized to any line with the same normalized impedances. Like as we use in uh, filters, we normalize the characteristic impedance. So we uh, take the value of the characteristic impedance in the normalized range. So we can use that range to apply on the various impedances. The Smith chart is a clever tool for analyzing transmission line. So its main application is also uh, used in the analysis of the transmission line. The outside of the chart shows locations on the line in wavelengths. So uh, the length of the transmission line is taken in terms of wavelengths. The combination of intersecting circles inside the chart allow us to locate the normalized impedance and then to find the impedance anywhere on the line. So the first point is to make the impedances in the normalized range. So we can generalize that range to find the impedance anywhere on the line. So this is the graphical representation of Smith charts. So these are the real impedance axis and these lines are showing, these circles are showing the values of the imaginary impedance axis. And these lengths are uh, considered in terms of the wavelength. Now the impedance divided by the line impedance, for example, if we have the Z1 is equals to 100 plus J50. So we have normalized this range. So if we take the value of the characteristic impedance normalized range in terms of 50, so we have normalized this range, 2 plus J. So if we have taken 75 minus J100, so we have normalized with the 50 ohms range, we have divided this uh, range and it comes to be like this. So in this way, we what we have done is the given impedances are calculated in terms of the normalized uh, impedances 
and then we have plotted these values on the smith chart so we have considered various values of the impedances and there we have normalized these range because the chart does not uh, follow all the values so we have to make the scale so in uh, making the scale we will normalize these range into a certain range if so we have divided the impedances by the normalized range thus the first step in analyzing a transmission line is to locate the normalized load impedances on the chart next a circle is drawn that represents the reflection coefficient or swr the center of the circle is the center of the chart the circle passes through the normalized load impedances any point on the line is found on this circle rotate clockwise rotate clockwise to move towards the generator away from the load the distance move on the line is indicated on the outside of the chart in the wavelengths so in this way we can analyze the transmission line on the smith chart so we will uh, move the line or the point either in clockwise or in anti clockwise upward and the downward towards the generator so we have marked this is the smith chart towards the generator when we move the point from in this direction if we move from uh, move the point in this direction then it will be away from the generator so we have considered the direction of the line towards the generator and away from the generator in this way we can calculate the reflection coefficient as we know that incident wave moves from the generator to the load and reflected wave move from the load to the generator this is the full uh, circle is one half wavelength since everything is repeating after lambda by 2 now the la uh, line is matched to the left of the stub because the normalized impedance and admittance are equal to 1 we have taken the value as 1 now the point on the smith chart where the line is matched in the center that is normalized value of z is 1 where also the reflection coefficient circle has zero radius or the reflection coefficient is zero thus the goal with the matching problem is to add an impedance so that the total impedance is the characteristic impedance so as we know the characteristic impedance of the transmission line is under root of r plus j omega l upon g plus j omega c so with this help uh, smith chart we can find the total impedance of the transmission line now we'll uh, study some uh, fundamental about the matching networks the purpose of the matching network is to eliminate reflections at the terminals m m dash for waves incident from the source even though multiple reflections may occur between these two points only a forward traveling wave exists on the feed line so this is the feed line which is known as the transmission line where the voltage or current is moving from generator to the load and this is the matching network and this is the load impedance so the line is traveling from the generator to the load these are the various examples of the matching networks this is the feed line if we take uh, consider the length of the transmission line as lambda by 4 there will uh, change the different values now it it is in series lambda by 4 transformer inserted at d is equals to d maximum or d is equals to d minimum so these are the examples of the trans uh, matching network which are connected to the transmission line at various wavelengths thank you